But well, I would say introduce yourself to anyone who hasn't. Uh, I've know made a lot of mistakes on the internet. And doesn't know without the mask, I guess. Uh, I'm Mad Max, movie, movie Madison Entertainment. Um, I got, I've been a YouTuber for a long time. Uh, I wanted to do a family channel. Family movie gaming toys and tech reviews where I reviewed Blu-rays and steel books and I talked about um collecting because I do collect I collect too much. Look at my VHS I just got. And you're all jealous. I got this today. My good pal Crazy Joe. My first signed. I need you, CJH, when you send the package, I need you to sign a picture. And send it to me. So I'm going to put it on the wall. You're going to go right under there. I'm probably going to. I, I need to get those pins where I could pin up pictures. And I'm also going to pin the beanie that I bought from you. Um, yeah. So The Last Jedi came out. I got angry because Luke's my favorite character. And I did rant videos. And I got monetized overnight. Overnight. And I did those Kathy Damn. Kennedy fire videos. I was the first video that said Kathy Kennedy fired on YouTube. I actually was. I yeah. watched the views and the subs come in. And I I watched people also say, this is clickbait BS. And I replied to them all back in the day. It was so really this fun. was even before Star Wars 3. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, there was there were a few people that didn't like it. I think the, the biggest person that didn't like it at that point was... Um, the Angry Joe show. Hmm. But I was out of town and I knew I didn't like it. I, I couldn't rant on it till I got home because I was at yeah. my 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 wife's house. My wife's or not my wife's house, my in-laws' house. So I couldn't like rant on it when I'm with my you know my mother and father-in-law. So I had to yeah. wait to make a video till I got back home. And my wife didn't even want to talk about it in the car. She's like, you know what? I enjoyed it. Don't ruin it for me. I don't care, you know. Yeah. And then I went home and started making videos, and I did Kathy Kennedy fired. And then I did Ryan Johnson's trilogy the next day, canceled. And uh, yeah. I got monetized like that. And then I really did too many of those videos. It was disgusting. Yeah. I kind of, I don't, I actually thought about unlisting them. I don't know. I you actually like, keep them up. I, I used to be connected to the fandom mess. I, uh, I mean, that's how I, I met you. But they don't that. really. They're not like how I am anymore, though. Uh, just... But that's the thing. I, I leave them up just as a history, I guess. Mm -hmm. but, so uh, that's how I got started, and then I actually thought I was doing good by calling out anti SJW channels. Like I thought they were really hurting uh nerd culture and then the more i've been on youtube i just everyone just doesn't doesn't matter they pick something to hate on and yeah. Yeah, it's just uh i'm having a lot more fun now than i ever have though right what now inspired... just... okay oh sorry i i was gonna say what inspired you to put on the mask and then what inspired you to take off the mask i guess um well to put on the mask yeah is i used to follow channels where i heard some real horror stories of people finding out things about them and i never wanted to, i always wanted this to be a hobby like i never intended this to be a full-time job so i'm like unless i do the full-time job i don't want people to know who i am yeah and then i was also wanted to be more uh, I also kind of is always inspired by Andy Kaufman. I like Andy Kaufman. Like Pete, he didn't tell people that he was acting. Some people actually believe that he was just a jerk, you know? So like, I kind of like that type of, of, uh, like not everyone's in on the joke. Yeah. You know, I'm a mad man, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, if people know me in real life, I'm smiling all the time. I'm having a good time. I kind of like being, it's still me, but more like a character of myself. Um, Dundo, no, 
I haven't really, I still can, like I still have, I sold most of my helmets cause that was another thing I intended to buy a lot of masks and helmets, which I did. And they're mm. very uncomfortable to wear. And that's the second part of your question. Like, yeah, I prioritized meeting my, fr my YouTube friends in real life and being at conventions uh, with keeping up the mask and the character that's still me, but it's more, yeah. more of a character of myself or, or just more uh, animated of myself yeah. um, with practicality being traveling, meeting up with people. And it got weirder. Like if you, you know, that picture I showed with me and my friend at John and his basement where I had the mask on for Miko. Yeah. That was freaking awkward. Like yeah. the other thing is before we started recording down there, I got into his bathroom and I came out with a mask on with a bunch it's... of people in the house. It was really awkward. <laughs> like it's really awkward yeah. to do that. And I was yeah. I, like, I can't, this makes me feel too weird. It actually feels second nature on YouTube, yeah. but when then you get in the real life settings and you're still yeah. have the mask and the costume, it gets really awkward. But and, also and I be very and I yeah. and I sweat. I'm a sweater, like at, yeah. if you know at the conventions, like props to all those people that cosplay. I get uncomfortable. I start sweating. It gets weird, and uncomfortable, and seeing out of the mask when you're doing YouTube when the screen's like right on you is easy. Yeah, but in a convention when you're going around looking for stuff, it's like impossible. Yeah. <laughs> like props to props to our pal Rhea. She should have just left me there when I was walking around. That first <laughs> that first day when I had the mask on the whole get up, I actually had your beanie yeah. on. Yeah. You know, the first day at the, the convention. And I was just like, this is not I can't I can't have fun like this. <laughs> yeah. So okay. that's why I stopped um, because I, I wanted to have fun at conventions and stuff in real life. And it's just, it was too awkward. Yeah. Definitely. They're probably very uncomfortable as well. Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you to transition to the movie talk of the channel? Um, I mean, that's kind of sad. That part, you know, some people I really care still care about uh things happened I'm not gonna get into yeah. and th so much though that it impacted my real life like my whole family knew about it yeah. and they were not happy and they said this isn't good for your your health where you know you're gonna give yourself uh like a heart attack and you can't go back to the internet if you keep if you keep this up yeah. and then sort of it was organic too like um i didn't just i didn't just pick going at jeremy from geeks and gamers because i was looking for a target for youtube vids i actually thought i was doing good by calling out bad behavior and i was honestly naive like yeah. I actually proved this is really more revealing than I thought we were going to go into honestly CJ, but yeah. um, I thought like for one thing, when I debated him, I thought people would get, would really not like that. They know he deleted his original review and just make a negative review to make money. Yeah. But then after all these years on the internet, I think people like people actually reward behavior to make money and not authenticity and genuineness. Just like, yeah, yeah he's making that money and they get like yeah. props to that. And yeah. I was, com I'm completely shocked by it. Now I understand. Cause I've been on the internet more. I understand that's how it goes. Yeah. Like people, give even you, the people give you street cred on <clears throat> the streets of YouTube. If you make yeah. money, even if you're not genuine, you're like, because honestly, does he, did he really not like the last Jedi that much? Probably yeah. not. He probably saw the money coming in, yeah. you know, and he deleted his original review 
And I proved that, but it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Like people's like, yeah, he meant, he realized Star Wars, Star Wars hate videos make money and he's yeah. making that money. And that's what gets respect around YouTube is making that money. You know, like you, you can't even talk about stuff you enjoy and more it becomes more about. the Yeah. And that. Than the... And honestly, um, I just. It's real a lot more or the way my sh content shifted. I'm having more fun talking about stuff I like. I love nerd debates, though. The only thing that I get upset is people take it too personally and start attacking the people. Yeah. You know, some of my Joe, I love Joe, crazy Joe. He was not originally. He kind of annoyed me because of his takes were yeah. so different. Now I love it. Like, I love it when he disagrees with me. I think it's, it makes my day. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, I, at the start, me and you didn't really get along. I was, oh, I didn't have the troll. You kind of, you kind of annoyed yeah. me at first. Yeah. And then I and then I grow, grow, grow to like you and then not to get into our story, but that thing that happened to yeah. you that I participate, I felt so bad. Yeah. And then they and I, I never wanted to do that again. I never wanted to. That's the reason I won't surprise yeah. people on stream. I'm like, I should not. have. It wasn't my idea. Just so you know, it was I just I shouldn't yeah. have went along with it. And I always regretted that. And then they kind of like wanted to oust you. From the community and i didn't i didn't want to do that you yeah. know i didn't i never yeah. stopped talking to you i'm like that's not cool he just got too wound up in nerd stuff yeah. you know and you're you're a good person you yeah. are and hearing about the two youtubers that defended me that that really meant a lot too it's like mm -hmm. i but, mean it was um, really stupid yeah. that whole thing like it was just like oh, yeah, really yeah. this is you know, and I, I don't like also, I don't like going after everyone. It's just like, I, I've read, I felt really bad about that. And that, you know, and to be, I was honest about Jeremy. Jeremy yeah. was really nice in that situation. He, he told people to stop and I relayed that message. And then they blame me for that. They said, yeah. Oh, I knew. No, he, just so you know, Jeremy is a stand up person. I don't like what he does. But behind the scenes, he said, while the stream was live, when that was happening, he said, no, nah, you should stop this. This isn't a good idea. Um, and that was, I didn't have that information beforehand. Yeah. So he, he cares about people enough to say, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. So, um, so I do think there is good in him. <laughs> I think what he, I, of, like, I, I yeah. would shake his hand if I ever met him. I still don't like his videos. I think he's, you know, but. Yeah. Um, what kind of challenges do you uh, face uh, producing content or like um, the stuff like that? Well, I know you, you pers you, I'm going to name my friends, you, Brian, Joe, they get, say that you get tired of movie talk really frustrate me because I would talk about movies 24 hours a day. The only thing I get frustrated with is my regular job takes the energy out of me so you know when i pass out and take a nap after work yeah like i want to talk about stuff but i don't have energy and i don't and i feel like if i'm not revived and take a nap i'm, I'm not going to be as entertaining i'm going to be like so uh. so that's my frustration is that seeing everyone else like the john camp is and the grace randolphs and everyone on twitter all day long when i'm doing my day job my day job is so exhausting and by the time i can get to it i feel you know it's like not it's the news isn't as fresh yeah i would love to be there when this news breaks for a lot of the stuff and just be live in the daytime like i would love the opportunity to do movie talk like john campia and to be my main my only job i just know that's never going to happen yeah. Uh, and I would love to I would love to talk more video games and music in movie talk too, like all entertainment. I love it. I look, I, I collect I collect um music cassettes and oh yes, you need to see Big Wreck in Canada. Uh CGH. They tour all the time. I'll buy your ticket. You need to go see them. They're an excellent band. Um, but I love entertainment. It's just I 
I, I, it's, it's frustration. Cause I'm like, I, I, I would stream every day if I could, yeah. I, I would, I love it's it. It's almost like I an love addiction. It. Yeah. But the only thing that's frustrating is when people get, take things too personally on the streams or when there's a hot topic, people get upset, but I yeah. love that. I love people disagreeing. I just don't like, you know, when they, when things get too personal. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, let's see. How do you choose topics for the channel? Um, I don't have a lot of prep time because I, because of, I'm also a caregiver for my parents and spending time with my wife, running errands and my, my job. So it's not like I could research. So I basically, if I have a time to set up a stream, I go to Twitter, go to certain sites to see what's news pops up. And that's it. And then I do the mailbag, which I really like. I really, I really, I, I really want people to put in them. I know also I feel bad because my friends sometimes like, oh, the mailbag. I love yeah. the mailbag. I love it when people leave stuff in there. It's, it makes great content. And I want to provide a service to my members. You know, I, I always, I didn't originally charge memberships. Actually, our good friend Rhea convinced me to. And that's actually helped supplement my income where I, have to take uh time off work to help my father my mother because i don't get paid for that a lot of times so that's actually helped me a lot it treated as like a second job but i also want to provide a value and i i do have plans also to do like membership cards like blockbuster but for mme mm -hmm. and send them out to members and laminate them i just I just have to get a printer too. I just haven't done all that yet. I have lots of plans. I have too many plans and not enough time. Yeah. That's my about, only plan. like exclusive videos for members. Do you ever think about doing that? Or yeah. Uh I originally was gonna do um like say behind I, the scenes or something. Yeah. Well, I kind of do that with my Madhouse series too. I also kind of wanted to be like semi reality TV, the madhouse and do content in my, like my living room and all kinds of stuff. And like what I'm eating in the day, just all kinds of stuff. But I don't know if that's good. Uh, I have the pool table in the living room now, which was fun for me and my yeah. wife today. And then I, I also want to stream from my living room with Callie and play video games and, you know, be on camera on my PlayStation. I have the, I have, I have I bought an extension cord so I could be on camera too for like some video game parties, Mario yeah. Kart, uh, Xbox parties, PlayStation parties, stuff like that. Um, so I, I kind of do the behind the scenes already. I don't think I would make it members only though. Uh, I don't I know. know. Maybe, being... maybe, maybe a longer cut would be, you know, members. Yeah. Only. I don't know. I know being behind the, camera or being in front of the camera has always been difficult for me i used to be just an avatar on this mm -hmm. channel what's well, good you you're showing more yeah. yeah um i used to be i'm still self-conscious but i used to be yeah. um people don't know uh when i was in high school i was very depressed at the end of high school i used to not talk to anybody so much that i had to get a go speak a special psychologist um i was had so much social anxiety that i wouldn't talk to people in public really yeah. so my my job working with customer service for over 20 years has really helped me get out of that it's helped me change and then youtube has actually really helped me with my being so self-conscious and um yeah. and social, social anxiety like, yeah youtube yeah. youtube and my job helped me a lot and uh, honestly i still i still get depressed like this week i was pretty depressed but uh, it makes life better i actually think youtube besides what you get money wise if you can make a little bit most people most people on youtube are not going to make a lot of money I think it's worth it uh, meeting some of the best people I've met in my life on YouTube. 
Yeah, yeah, and I I would go hang hang out you in Canada. I'm serious about that one day. Yeah. We'll see. I have to get I have to get my uh, passport. Do you uh, have any memorable or funny moments from the channel that you that really, uh, you know, are out there that you can remember? It's weird because you know my intro, which I love to. I still like looking at my intro. It's just unfortunate I can't play the whole. I have a lot of stuff that's yeah. just not. It's not going to go well if I play it all. Uh, but I also not interested in doing the kind of content where people just want to hop on stream like, hey, I got a problem with you. Yeah. But it, I'm still very nostalgic for that, too. Like, I'm like, man, I kind of miss Jeremy popping in or Andy Signor. Or... We had a lot of moments like that that were, in retrospect, were yeah. hilarious. They're I'll, funny. I'll, I'll take my mask off. If yeah. You take off. <laughs> so I... Yeah kind of miss that but i'm also not going to do that again yeah yeah so i don't think those times are ever coming back where there's people like send me the link now so we can hash this out yeah. so i think that's times past but i really am nostalgic for it yeah i'll take my mask off if you take your mask off brother yeah i love that yeah. moment I actually yeah. want just the heads. I if I could find the video where I took my mask off and you know I already took it off and I was wearing sunglasses. Yeah. But I also put it back on and took it off in one of these. Yeah. Trailer reactions or something. I, if I could find that and splice it right after he says, "Take it, yeah. I'll take yours off, brother." Then I might yeah. add that to the intro, like me taking the mask off, which yeah. would be kind of funny. I, I remember it being like a weird thing where people would, or like myself, would be like see the reflection on something and be like that's what max looks like <laughs> so, yeah no you kind of creeped me out a few times with that <laughs> because i thought I, like, at, I thought at one point you were really trying to figure you expose me yeah i, no, I thought I, I thought you were really trying to say <laughs> i thought like if if i actually yeah, slip it up, was mostly CJ, for memes yeah i know i know that but if i said if i slip up cjh is gonna find <laughs> it and post it on twitter <laughs> right yeah, would you yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> probably yes you would have yeah it's kind of like hello greedo like no one knows what hello greedo looks like behind the mask <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. yeah, gotta be on top of that um what advice would you give to someone trying to start their own channel um it's hard because I still get the urge to comment on other YouTubers. But if you really want to make a run at this and you want the opportunity in the future to be a huge YouTube big channel and actually make it um, a living, if you have a great personality, um, it's probably best not to comment on other, other YouTubers because it... Yeah. Even though you're probably right, your viewers watch they they watch like the some they, viewers they watch everybody and then yeah and it really limits your reach and not like you shouldn't you shouldn't um, excuse hatefulness you know yeah you shouldn't excuse that but I would really it's there is a route on youtube to be a commentator on other channels but it's a long miserable road and it's not you're gonna have a lot more fun not doing it because i dabbled in it a little bit but i didn't go to as extreme as some channels and if you still want to do that hey i'm not judging you i'm not judging you i'm just saying it's yeah. hard it's hard it's gonna make it's not gonna be fun it's going to be potentially dangerous in certain situations. And it's really not worth it, to my opinion. It's not worth it calling out other yeah. people because I've done, I've, look, I've done that a lot more than other people have done. It's just like, uh, now I, I, I would I regret and take it away? 
I have some great moments there. I thought it was a lot of most most people that um, that I went after, criticized, overly criticized. <laughs> I think are at least okay with me most, but um, uh, if you really, because there's a lot of great personalities out there that um, that do you know they do have a chance to break through. And I think you're going to limit your chances if you criticize, you know, other people. And I, I, I probably have done too much to encourage other YouTubers in the past to do it, but I yeah. don't, I, I now, after all I've gone through, I don't think it's worth it. I don't. Yeah. Is there any like YouTube or connections that you regret? Like, not being connected to anymore any regrets i have or yeah yeah like any, well uh, i could still bridges, say this any I bridges could still, uh, be i could still i could still say this without bringing up old drama okay yeah yeah with i still yeah, with i still oh, i i will say this as a blanket statement i still wish success for everyone i've ever known and i wish there was a situation where we could all still be like we were, but I just can't because the cycle seems to be uh, continuing. You know, like, like I, if I stop doing things, it's only because I think that it's just the cycle is going to continue. We'll get closer yeah. and then something's going to happen. And that's the only reason. But other than that, I wish everyone be prosperous, have a great life. And that's the only reason. It's because I feel like I have I have a problem with setting boundaries with everyone. Like, yeah. I'm just going to, I love people too much. Like, I can't cut people off and I don't want to keep people off. But the only reason I do remove myself from certain situations or certain people I still care about is yeah, because for your own it, I, yeah. I feel like the cycle is going to continue. And that's the only way to break the cycle. Yeah. And I, then I'm going to get dragged up into, you know, to the, to the same stuff again, which I've yeah. done YouTube for a long time. And I just can't do, I can't do that anymore. I'm going to be 42 soon. Can't a do anyone, it. Anyone uh, starting out, like how, what advice would you give them handling like negative feedback and all that? Oh, I love negative feedback. As long as it's not hateful. I, you know, like people criticize yeah. me in my chat. I think it's hilarious. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, like I, anyone that's starting out, like probably don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. I, I like you, I think you pay too much attention to it. I don't, who cares as long as they're not making yeah. threats or anything. Yeah. There's, those well, are the, the look at Disney well, Star they Wars. Say Disney that, Star... They they always say that haters are the biggest fans. And that usually yes. is true. Yeah. yeah, look how much these people the people that hate Star Wars the most watch it the most. Yeah. They right. watch it more than we do, you know? Yeah. Um let's see. Right. Questions. What's your favorite um interaction with like like say what's your what's a favorite youtuber that you've met along the way like someone that's well, out, like really big and like whatever um my friends are my favorite youtubers i've met but the people yeah. i've met big yeah. um so far i've just met pat the nes punk in real life and angry video game nerd now yeah. our pal Rhea, I remember seeing that video and our pal Rhea photo. Lo loves anger video game nerd and I liked him enough back in the day but I was never like a huge fan of him but I I like respect what he's done and he didn't really seem to like me <laughs> <laughs> because I asked him it was great just behind the scenes yeah. I asked him to say something about my channel and he completely like fumbled it on purpose I think uh, and he didn't he didn't do it right until Raya asked him again. Oh, can't you just say this? Uh, yeah. but he's like, all right. But I don't think he liked. <laughs> but the Pat Pat the NES Punk was fun because of the whole Amico disaster. 
Yeah. And him realizing who I was because I actually, I wanted to go up to him without my mask on and say, oh, I'm sorry. And he's like, sorry yeah. for what? Who the heck are you? Um, <laughs> and then, then, then I told him I was the, and he, then he was laughing a bit, you know, yeah. but he still, if I go up on his channel and say in the comments, Hey, I'd like to collab or something. He won't respond. <laughs> yeah. But that's um, the, I haven't met many YouTubers in real life besides friends like big YouTubers. No offense to my friends, we're not we're not big YouTubers. Yeah. How has your taste in movies evolved over time? Uh, how does it I, influence your content you create today? I actually do want to like more things. And my the older I get, like some you know, you know people. In their young 20s, um, they can be a little pretentious about what they like. Movies, music, video games. Oh, this is good. This band, you know, like just like yeah. people are about your your favorite band, Nickelback. I don't know if they're your favorite. I'm just kidding. But uh, but like we, we watch that music video. It's like, oh, that's a pretty good yeah. Nickelback song. I want to like more styles of music, genres of movies. Uh, on the only thing I'm not really open to exploring more is video games because I know which video games I like, I know which video games I don't yeah. like, and I have limited time for video games. Yeah. So I'm not like, I mean, if something new comes along and it's like really groundbreaking or a new VR game, maybe because I'm not, I, I've dabbled in VR a little bit, then yeah. I might be interested. But movies music tv shows i want to expand my horizons i want to watch horror um i'd like to try to uh you know new so type you wouldn't, so you wouldn't dabble into like story driven video games that are almost like no because my attention span is not the greatest and i don't have that much time because of all the other stuff i do like if yeah. i if i have time to play a video game i want to get like right into action like a first person shooter fighting game an action game something a driving game something i could just start and in, right into the action i don't like reading menus and equipping things and and all this like stat building and like yeah. you know if there's a character creator screen and if there's an option yeah. to hit, hit a random creation i'll do random creation just to get to the action <laughs> like you know how people like spend hours yeah. creating their avatar i don't care about that at all like yeah. i could care less i just want to play <laughs> yeah. how do you manage to stay authentic and true to your personal voice while adapting to the changing demands of online content creation Oh, I, I, I don't like, know. Like live for, live for, streams. For, live like streams. for example, how like YouTube is moving towards shorts and live stream. Oh, yeah. I think you stuff. always have to like, I never really wanted to do shorts. I never really wanted to do, you know, um, but it's a way to open the, the channel to a new audience. And then I found an easy way that I could do it where I could, you know, where it's not going to yeah. take up a, my, a lot of my time. A lot of a lot of my decision making for content creation is time investment because I I don't have a lot of time. So the easiest way for me to make shorts is to make clip outs from my live streams or videos. So I yeah. very rarely, unless like my dog or my cat's doing something funny or something funny in real life, then I'll do a quick short. But yeah. that influences. You need to do shorts if you have a YouTube channel 2024. You have yeah. to, or you're not going to grow unless you're doing but you extremely have, you well done be... edited content yeah. or hate content. Yeah. If you're just, you also, you're, yeah. Yeah. You also have to be very particular about the shorts because the YouTube algorithm pushes the shorts to random people and then they, you know, they may not like that content. So, so to answer your question there, uh, the what influences me for content is ease of uploading because also look at this. I used to do better funny thumbnails. My yeah. wrist has gotten so bad that I I really do basic thumbnails now. That's why. That's why my thumbnails yeah. are so basic now. Remember I used to do funny thumbnails and yeah. 
you know, I just, my, my wrist hurts. I'd rather mm -hmm. save this so I could go play a video game for a few hours instead of doing Are a lot of basic. Do you, do you find that the basic ones actually give more views than the old ones or no? Uh, actually on clip out vids, not the shorts. Sometimes I just get a cool picture from a movie or something that I just never see on there. And sometimes every once in a while that gets better click through rates than a, a yeah. than a thumbnail I plan every once in a while. Uh, but then that, and then how do I stay authentic? Live streaming. Live streaming keeps you authentic. You cannot be fake when the majority of your content is live streams. You can't do it. Yeah. When you no. live stream for the majority of your content, your personality is going to come through. I think people could keep up with persona more often if they don't do live streams. If they do pre-recorded content, you can maybe stay in, but it, your personality is going to shine through on live streams the more you do it. Yeah. Now, now I could just hit go. Remember, my first live stream was a disaster. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Remember how me, nervous like, I was? I, yeah. Well, I I used to do solo streams all the time. Now it's a little bit difficult. Because I have uh, had that time gap where I haven't been uploading mm -hmm. solo streams anymore, so now it's hard to get back into the mojo. But yeah. Um. In your experience, how has the online movie community evolved, and role? What role do you see your channel playing in that community? Um, I actually see the OG movie talk channels doing a little bit better again. Uh, the hate channels have not gone away. They're never going to go away. No. Um, but honestly, I think people that get mad at the geeks and gamers are kind of hypocritical because lots of people like to hate on movies. It's just that the geeks and gamers and their erotics focus on certain things, yeah. which I think is disgusting to focus on that thing yeah. constantly. But still, honestly, a lot of even like if you look at the old OG angry video game nerd and all, they were still hating on entertainment, too. You know, yeah. that's what got popular. So that's... Now I find there's more of a push towards like politics now with when it comes to hate. Yeah. Well, that's the whole environment altogether is everything's yeah. focused on politics. Yeah. And there's not really the thing is there's not a way to escape it either. Like people are like, yeah. oh, we're talking about that. There's not a way to yeah. escape politics. No. Nine more. And no. you know, they some a lot of times they should influence content too. Yeah. You know, what you can't not like being non political is also political. Yeah. Like sometimes you if you try too hard to stay away from politics where it's unnatural, where it's a topic that serves it, it's also kind of political. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. All-time favorite film recommendations to uh, viewers? Well... My favorites are Star Wars A New Hope and Back to the Future. Um, I'll stick with those. I really like Jurassic Park. Jaws. Um, Tombstone. I love Tombstone. With... Uh, Kurt Russell and um, Val Kilmer. What was, uh, what was the first uh, movie that you saw in theaters? It was either Back to the Future or E.T. E.T. I love, but it's not one of my favorites. Like, I really enjoy the movie, but it's not like one I like to watch all the time. Yeah. Who got you into uh, movies or... Did you, did my dad, find... my dad was always into movies and music. Still, like he wants me to take him to look for records tomorrow. 
Yeah. Are there any upcoming movies that you are anticipating? Yeah, I want. I actually really am happy for David Ayer that he's kind of had some of it a rebound after the disastrous leaving the Warner Brothers. And people are saying the beekeeper. And I'm not like a huge Jason. I don't really, I don't hate Jason Statham. I don't like him either. Like some people really like him. Some people really hate him. My wife can't stand him. Movies yeah. is it. I like his rated R movies because he's more, he gives like, gives that little extra. Yeah. And he, you know, with his language, it seems like he's having more fun with his, when the gloves are off. And I'm interested to see how far they're going to take this beekeeper movie. And John Wick's got a little bit stale. It's not exactly like John Wick, but it's in a similar vein. But yeah. it's a little more absurd too with the bees. Like I'm, I'm expecting to be a little more over the top, even. Yeah. So, I'm really looking forward to that. And I really, even though I'm personally not into wrestling, I respect wrestling. I respect a lot of people that come from the wrestling world. I love wrestling video games. I love documentaries about wrestling or or um you know fictional stories about wrestling or tv shows like i love the rock show before it was canceled uh i really want to see the iron claw and i know that's not going to be a happy go lucky wrestling movie but i yeah. really want to see that i just didn't get a chance to see that so that uh godzilla x kong the new empire i'm glad it exists but i'm honestly my hype level is not like i'm gonna go see it but it's not as high as it was when i saw first godzilla versus kong i just never expected them to do another one i thought that was going to be the pinnacle uh deadpool 3 like that's the movie is my like beyond my wildest dreams yeah that i'm I, so I, excited I, and i wasn't I a whole day i wasn't a huge deadpool fan before ryan reynolds like i've always enjoyed the character but it didn't click for me until I saw the first Deadpool movie, like where I really liked Deadpool. Yeah. You know, I myself cannot wait till the new Planet Apes movie. Honestly, I'm a huge Planet of the Apes fan. I like, I watched the old ones back with my dad when they first re released the original, the old school Planet of the Apes movies on DVD and they put a box set yeah. back in like the 90s or early 2000s. Me and my dad watched them all. We loved it. Um, and I really enjoyed the remake. I actually like Rise the best, not the Matt Reeves ones. Yeah. Rise is my favorite with John Lithgow and James Franco and the younger Caesar. I really enjoyed that one. I think that one's magical. Yeah. And it's it's more it's more it's more uh, unique to all the Planet the Apes franchise as a whole is Rise yeah. because you know the way it's the set human up. story as well. As yeah. The, yeah. So. But honestly, I just didn't feel anything in this new trailer. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's going to be bad. And I, I'm really do, happy. Do you think maybe like, it's the trailer itself is badly edited? It, no, it's just the special effects didn't look any better. Never. Like nothing. I, I've like seen it all before. Yeah. Nothing seemed like new, fresh and exciting. Like we've gotten to the point with that franchise where they've tried most things. Yeah. Like, what else are they going to do that's new and exciting? It's kind of, it's it's going to similar territory to the, the OG original Planet of the Apes yeah. with the, you know, the actress from The Witcher. Yeah. Um. So. that That's what interests me about the new movie is I want to see, because they hinted towards the astronauts in the first rise of Planet of the Apes movie uh, with the newspaper and all that. Mm -hmm. And my especially with it being taking place 300 years after Caesar. Uh, I want to see if they're going to bring in that story element. Oh, that, yeah, you've been talking about that. That would be interesting. That would, that yeah. would actually be a hook that would get me in. Like, I'm yeah. going to go see it, but I'm yeah. just, but I honestly, I doubt like I, I'd be, on the original. I'd be yeah. to be fair, CJ, I'd be surprised if this movie doesn't, is in a bomb blockbuster not yeah. the, not because of the quality but because i don't think the interest is there like it was when they did the matt reeves trilogy yeah. i don't think it's there still like you know how i always yeah. say batman and superman have to compete against their back catalog 
Planet of the yeah. Apes also has to compete against the back catalog. And what are they? What have you done for me lately? Unfortunately, is what the audience is going to ask. Say, exactly. the special effects There's do not too much do they do time gap? Yeah, and, and do the special effects look any more significantly better than the last? No, they look just the same. So yeah. I really, I'm surprised this movie got greenlit and made. It, I would imagine, if the story is good. Then if there's like an amazing go. story yeah. that we're not seeing in the trailer that they're keeping under wraps, yeah, something that's really gonna pique an interest or something like shocking, yeah. Because remember, the first Planet of the Apes was shocking, yeah, when they showed the Statue of Liberty on the beach, you know, that was like, yeah. Whoa, are they gonna have anything like that? The mouth, yeah. So, I think they kind of need to bring that back, even the rise. Part of the reason I like the rise, it was like. It was it was shocking how they you know we know how we treat animals in the real world, but yeah. seeing 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 the apes interact and the with people when you know when you that, when yeah. you know the animals know what you're thinking was next level storytelling. Like yeah. when you when you okay, so say say even humans how we treat animals in 2024. What yeah. if the animals if you know the animals actually know what you're doing and can think and say like they do think, yeah, you know, animals are smart that you like, they could respond to you and look at you and you could feel yeah. what they're, you know, that is next level. And I don't like, I don't see the hook yet for this one. That's going to hook yeah. in the people to get them back. And I wanted to, I want everything to su 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 succeed, yeah. but. I just don't see I I don't think it's gonna do good. And yeah. I would gladly take that L. Like I want it to be a whole new oh, trilogy. Sure. I want it yeah. to be I want it to succeed, but I just now Star Wars, um I know the horse has been been <laughs> beat, 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 the, this... beating the dead horse, broken record. Yeah. Wait, yeah. When, when it comes to like Disney and Star Wars and all that. But do you think there's more hope for Star Wars now that the interest towards the TV shows have kind of, you know? I think there is some bit. hope, but honestly, I don't think that it's going to be a success across the board until Kathy is replaced, if that's possible. Yeah. Because I do respect her activism work, but I always just... I feel like she'll still put the priority over her activism as an employer in diversifying her talent pool, which is, I respect that, but I think she'll always put that over the story and she'll think, well, you get the right people. The story comes with it. And I don't think that happens a lot of time. And I, I, her habit of hiring who's hot in Hollywood yeah. is I not, think a, it's not, a, I think that's mo my most consistent criticism against Kathy yeah. that I think people mo mostly agree with is that she hires a hot director and says, what do you want to do? Instead of saying what project do we want to do first and then finding the talent afterwards, which I actually give yeah. props to James Gunn. James Gunn tells you about the project first and then finds the talent to direct it. You're yeah. like, he was talking about Brave and the Bold before he hired Muschietti, but I don't think Muschietti is making that movie. I'm just going to no. say that. Yeah. I don't That's think still a problem, but like at least have a goal towards. Yeah. 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 I, because hiring someone because they're hot and then say, do what you want has been a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. What do you think the role of movie talk channels are, uh, have in shaping public opinion? Uh, I don't think you could shape public opinion. I think, you know, uh, I think the best you could do is try to be open to people with different opinions. I try to do that on my channel still. Um, not think, take things too personally. Um, there's sometimes I, I, where there's guests that kind of, you know, go a little bit overboard. I'm thinking of a certain frog comic 
guy. <laughs> oh no, I still I'm still a fan of his. Um I honestly just disappointed about how he much he's got into internet culture. It's a disease. Yeah. And it, the internet is a disease. If you let it ruin your life, you run your life. But he makes all his money online. Like he has yeah. to be online all the time. So I think he could have gone farther. Um if he would have just been able to keep his mouth shut a little bit more. Yeah. And then they did try to cancel him and you know, when they when they're talking about his Sinestro cover. Um, but he he does say th he's not worth having on anymore because he upsets too many people. I know what good is it for me to say that he he doesn't really hate anyone. He just likes to trigger people. Yeah. If it makes people upset, there's really no benefit to having him on anymore. And that, that's not I don't always look for benefits to having people on is to have them as guests. Yeah. It's just he's gonna upset someone yeah. when he's on, and especially Definitely. if it's you gotta draw a line somewhere. Basically. He's gonna upset someone, and he doesn't yeah. care, and he's just doing his thing. Yeah. And uh, it, it comes I, down to respect, like you respect well, the platform I, you're on. Would I go have a beer with him? Yeah. Would I have him on the yeah. channel if he really wanted to be on? If I, I thought if I was going to have him on the channel again, I'd actually do like what you're doing for me, like a real hardcore yeah. interview, like and not yeah. you know, cut the shit a little bit and say, you know what? I, I kind of disappointed in you. I, I think you could have a much better, be more prolific if you would stop yeah. the shit. You know, it's not yeah. worth it. Exactly. What, what's yeah. going to what's going to happen when you're gone, EVS? Your internet memes are, are they still going to be dropping? Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. 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 Uh, what's going to happen? Are you going to have your memes when you're gone off this earth, or do you want your your work to stand the test of time? Yeah. Because honestly, you're going to have your fan base that carries Cyber Frog, but uh, don't you want your art to live on and be more important than your jokes and bullshit? And I I think his his career you know his career is tame with jokes and bullshit for shits and giggles where he could have had something that stands the test in time, but you're mm. not going to have that because it has to at least get to the mainstream, you know, to, to, to when we're all gone here, some yeah. of this, some of the stuff we like is going to live on music, movies, video games, exactly. and some of it's going to get forgotten, you know? Yeah. And then the, all the bullshit's not going to no people aren't going to remember that. Or they'll remember it in a negative way. Exactly. So. Very few people that live get to leave something that lasts forever. And yeah. I think he gave up his shot. What's a surprising reaction from a certain video that you would had hoped uh, did well, but got some negative reaction from? Hmm. Um, well, for some of my hot takes, like my content's changed. So my hot yeah. takes don't do as well as they used to. The hot, the hot takes is what got me monetized, you know? Yeah. So I think some Your of my hot, hot, takes, hot takes. Yeah, <laughs> I think my hot takes are fire. But then it's not getting the engagement. It's just my audience has changed. Yeah. Because some people only do hot takes. And then it's not. That's the other thing. When The other reason I stopped. If, if I, besides like talk about Kathy and Ryan and negative about Star Wars. Yeah. Is I started. I, I wasn't inauthentic. But I was trying to find. You know, you find yourself trying to frame things a certain way in a narrative of negative and it it wasn't authentic like i couldn't find bad stuff about everything there was only certain things i was really upset about that was star wars kathy kennedy and ryan johnson yeah. and then the when my wife called me out on the brie larson captain marvel videos i did a few of those and i was like uh i actually would not go see that movie at first and i regret that because I, I really like the character and I like Brie Larson a lot. 
now. And I was getting caught up a little bit of the, I didn't hate Bree, but I was like also like commenting on the comments, but I got over quick, but uh, you know, I didn't want to try to find something I didn't like about a new franchise. Like if it didn't come, you know, feel it felt like that's what people do. Just jump to the next thing to dislike. I'm like, that's not, it wasn't inauthentic. Like I, I generally was like annoyed with Captain Marvel at first. Yeah. But I'm like, that's where I stopped doing it. I, I took a break after that, after the Captain yeah. Marvel vids. I did well, only, I did only like three or four of them. Yeah. There's and, sometimes there's a movie that you watch and then you're like, you, you enjoy it at the end and then you go online and you see all these people hating on it. Yeah. So I, I did, I felt like, uh, I felt like, do I really dislike this? No, no. And I don't want to, I don't want to not like a new, another franchise. Cause I love the MCU. Yeah. I want to try to find good things about it. That's, that's honestly what I recommend to a lot of people. Stop trying to find things you dislike. Try, try to th find, tr treat them like your friend. The best friends of life are ones that prop you up and don't focus on your faults because everyone has faults. Yeah. Focus on the good things you do because everyone makes mistakes. Yeah. Still and call out the little things, but be yeah, yeah. nice but about Be understanding it. Yeah. and try to move on and everyone makes mistakes. And yeah, so try to find the good things and that's the way i approach it now like i still have major criticisms of movies like i did not like aquaman 2 but um i not i actively try to like like when i watch it again i'm gonna try to like it i'm gonna watch it again mm -hmm. but i was really disappointed but i actively try to find things that i like about everything so yeah two uh final questions is um what was the first ever official MME uh, episode like when you transitioned to MME? I don't remember. I've done so <laughs> many live streams that I don't know which. The first one was probably a mishmash of talking about other YouTubers and movie talk. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of get the urge to just still do a reaction to someone else, but just not too much. Yeah. Grace Randolph. <laughs> yeah. I kind of went overboard watching Grace. Yeah. But she elicits a reaction from me, though. I always have a strong reaction after watching her. Like, she says some crazy stuff. She's still pretty intelligent, too. Like, I think she has yeah. good points. Um, So I might do reactions occasionally. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I don't remember, like, official and then me. Like, I don't know. I enjoy all the, the moments, but it's like a blur. I don't, I didn't lay, I didn't number the episodes. I have no idea what's the first and official yeah. MMB yeah. episode is. I don't know. Have, have you thought, have you thought about going back and just editing the no. episode number? No, no, <laughs> too many, uh, too, on limited time. And yeah. I would rather make new content to go back and edit old content. Like I'd rather yeah. make a new live stream then go back and edit like i i right now i really want to do a new logo i want to yeah. work on the intro again i want to do an intro for tape hunters and i have projects that i, I like i i wanted to do custom bhs and i'm slow on that like i have too many ideas yeah. to get done that i can't even think about editing an old video like there's yeah. so much things i want to do still that i just haven't i just don't have the time yeah it's it's just being a being a you know helping my parents so much yeah like i, I like i'm always yeah. at my parents and my mom's like can you do this for me should I go this air and stop by your sisters i'm like okay yeah. there's not enough time like, if i get some like free my, time i'd rather do a boot up a live stream or play a video game or something yeah like myself i i'm i i had plans to do a graphic novel and i i still kind of want to do that it's just finding the time mm -hmm. Yeah. I do too. Um, I I want to do yeah. a comic. I wanted to do a comic in my early twenties. I, I eventually. I, that's another thing I was thinking. I'm like, I kind of want to start drawing again and bring out some of my art so people could see. But then I'm like, what are you doing, Max? Because your your wrist is shit. 
Yeah. Um, I could still draw a little bit, but I was thinking of doing like, you know how people do all these Indiegogos? Just do yeah. really cheap comics. Like come up with a clever name where cheap comics are only like five bucks and just yeah. do it really basic. And then maybe you'll catch something like a bunch of us do really cheap yeah. comics. And then maybe you'll catch a good story. And then if people really like one of the cheap comics, if it does sell a lot, then you're like, you know what? We're going to pay for an expert artist to upgrade this comic. Yeah. I would start small, just get the story out, just get all like all the um, storyboarding and, you know, just do it just to get it, do it. Cause that's the, you know, you hit a, a creative wall, just do yeah. it. Just like, just like uh, Shia LaBeouf, just do it. Just yeah. do it in the most basic form you can, you know, not stick figures, but you know, yeah. And get the story out and see if it's good. See if people like the story and the characters and then upgrade if it, if it becomes a hit, you know? Yeah. What's the biggest lesson you've taken away from being a YouTuber? Um, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm going to go check on Callie in a second. Um, to really put people in opportunities first ahead of even like hot like hot takes and commenting on other people like i put value the time i spend with my friends meeting them in real life it's an amazing experience over like situations that are going to make people uncomfortable in real life like have fun on youtube have fun with your movie talk have fun with that but if it's going to make you uncomfortable in real life going to conventions like i never want to go so extreme that i can't if i see jeremy geeks and gamers in real life i'm going to go up and say hi to him i'm going to go up say hi to ryan kennel that might be interesting but i never want to I don't want to make myself uncomfortable in real life in including with my family again, you know, yeah, it's not worth it. It makes you feel horrible. And I just want to be happy. I want to enjoy my time on the internet, but make sure you put family and friends first, because let's say you're a hot, you, you know, you go hot on YouTube and you criticize other people. But what if you're at a convention and you want to be with your friends and maybe they're not comfortable, you know, being around you because you've thrown so much heat on the internet, you know? Yeah. That's another factor. Friends and family around you. You don't want all that extra. And it, it is fun to go to conventions. Like, I, I mean, uh, I, I still get nervous with a lot of people around, like if it's too big, but I would like to go to smaller conventions, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, it's a lot of fun hanging out with your friends at a convention, meeting people and, you know, not have to worry about extra shit. Don't yeah. worry about the extra shit. And finally, where can people find you and anything? Movie bad? madness and entertainment. And, um, I still think there's a lot, a great movie talk. I'm really hoping that I do think the quality has slid in movies, but I do think that there's enough smart people in Hollywood and entertainment. They're going to figure things out. They're going to figure a hook. And I think a starving artist, I don't want people to be starving. Okay. But sometimes you never, you ever hear that the starving artist makes the best work, like even yeah. rock music or anything. Some of their best stuff is the early stuff. They're, they're hungry. For success yeah. i do think that even though we had some hard times with covid and the strikes and ai that this is going to create some of the best entertainment we've ever had after this so even though people are down on superhero movies and movies in general and not all there's still success people still make money at the box office but it has to do, do something fresh. I think it's going to drive innovation. And we're going to get some of the best content ever after this. 
I really believe I really believe that because it's not going to all disappear. I think it's going to make content better because they realize what's at stake. Yeah. All right. So that was the end of the interview. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm going to play the outro. And then if you want to uh, chat just a couple seconds after, okay. that's fine. All right.